it's just amazing that it, it loves the heat. Yeah, it's crazy you can have a grass cut that short and it and it likes you know it does this well in the heat yeah you can't even begin to dream about that fescue like that no no it, no, no, it no, no kill it dead as an animal you know you, you're gonna scalp it down and cut all the crown off anyhow i mean there's it's gone there's just it's enough. gone yeah it's just a different plant that's, that's tight though that's yeah she is rolling baby Hey there, it's Pete with GCI Turf. Hope you're having a great day today. I got a super special guest. He is an actual uh, member of the GCI Turf team. He lives in West Virginia, yep. Mr. Jeff. And typically, if you send in an email, if you go to the website and click contact and DIY contact and, and you send in an email, Jeff here is the man that answers your question. He wanted to come down, hang out for a couple of days to get more familiar and learn a little bit about Bermuda grass. West Virginia, y'all really don't have any Bermuda up there. It's all pretty much cool season up our way. Pretty much all cool season. Not to say that there's not any up there, but in his neck of the woods, but predominantly cool season. So he wants to learn a little bit more about Bermuda. We're gonna work on my yard today. And then tomorrow we're gonna go out and spray some athletic fields, which they're all Bermuda grass as well. So I kind of thought it would be cool to do like a Bermuda basics. Uh -huh. You know, just Very the good. bare bones basics. Start with that and get your feet wet. And then, you know, as if we need to move into something heavier, but it's, Bermuda's not real complicated. Mm -hmm. Bermuda's yes. pretty easy, in my opinion. So. Um, We'll, we'll, Jeff's gonna do some mowing as well. So while we're talking, we'll let you watch Jeff mow. Bermuda grass basics. What is Bermuda grass? Well, it's a, you know, turfs are separated into two different uh, categories, cool season, warm season. Yes. Bermuda's a warm season yes. turf, meaning it's gonna thrive in the heat. It, it prefers hot weather, before it prefers a hot climate. Um, you know, we've got that little band that goes across the country called the transition zone. Mm -hmm. Typically, the north side of the transition zone, cool season turf. South side, warm season turf. Mm -hmm. And right in the middle, you kind of get the best of both worlds where you can kind of pick and choose which one you want yes. for the most part. Now, with that said, that don't mean you can't go somewhere north and have Bermuda. Mm -hmm. The problem with that is, is the winters are longer and the summers are shorter. Mm -hmm. So the Bermuda isn't gonna be in its element for an extended period of time, right. like it would say in you know, Florida. Yeah. Something like that. So you don't get to enjoy the turf as long. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and from a health standpoint, you know, the winters up north, even though Bermuda's dormant in the winter, the winters can be really, really hard on the root system oh, on turf, sure. yes. called winter kill. Yes. And it can really, uh, you know, hinder the turf from waking up and, and thriving when it does get hot. And then it takes so long to grow it back in. And by the time all that's happened, summer's over. Yes. It's time to go to fall <laughs> again. So all right. that's, that's the downfall to Bermuda in a northern climate. But like I said, there's no doubt in my mind you can go to Minnesota and I'm sure somebody has Bermuda up there. There's no doubt in my mind somebody's got it. What's the best place to grow Bermuda? I think we kind of just talked about that. It's all about the climate. Uh, when, you, when, you, when you're mowing and you get over here in this area in the corner, you're gonna see the Bermuda's kind of thin over there. Mm -hmm. That's because it's shady. Okay. That's a shady spot. Bermuda loves full sun. Full sun. Mm -hmm. The more out in the open, more wide open the area is where the sun can come in direct contact with the leaf blade, Bermuda loves it. You stick it back up in the corner, and it's a little shady, Bermuda don't like it. Bermuda is a very you know, they call it the alpha grass. Uh -huh. It's because it's super tough, resilient. You, the way you make it grow is you piss it off. Yeah. You people set it on fire. Yeah. They do skin it to the ground and it just comes, comes right, right back so much mm -hmm. harder and so much more vibrant. It's the alpha grass. Mm -hmm. Growth habit. This is a, 
and by the way all these things i'm talking about they're they're my opinions and what i've learned about bermuda over the years you know of course everybody's got their own take on grass and i like doing it this way they do it this way and billy does it that way so these are my opinions and my take on it. growth habit i feel like you got a very wide variety of uh, growth habit men what i mean by that well the growth habit of it is it spreads by stolens and rhizomes. Mm -hmm. Stolen are little runners that crawl on top of the ground. Rhizomes are runners that crawl under the ground. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like they go over and shoot a little baby plant up. Uh, it, it likes to run and spread and grow. It will grow vertically, but it does a lot of growing uh, Lateral. laterally yeah. as yeah. well, laterally. Yes. And that's how you, Bermuda can be so thick cut so short it's because it grows like this along with this uh, as far as the way you can mow Bermuda based on the growth habit the sky's the limit I got an eighth inch right here mm -hmm. on a putting green I've got customers that cut it at a four inches four inch Bermuda. four inch Bermuda and it looks wow. great it looks it looks <laughs> wonderful it's I really never figured that yeah it's really bushy and shaggy and plush I mm -hmm. guess kind of like walking on a pillow mm -hmm. the downfall to mowing Bermuda up high is all the leaf material the leaf blade kind of is basically at the end of the stem oh, okay. okay so when you mow you cut the color off and you're left with a bunch of brown stems now of course that's gonna heal yeah. up and repair yeah. itself but that's the ugly part of cutting it up really high. Does that make sense? That makes a lot. When you look at the one eighth and see how you just, yeah. I mean, it's just hard to believe. It's just barely nipped on the dirt. Yes. Just barely yes. nipped. And for cool season folks to see that and feel that and touch that. Yeah. Is this the first time you've ever been on Bermuda? Do you play golf? No, I don't play golf. I'm not a golf. Okay. Um, probably Bermuda this tight yeah it probably is first time yes i'm sure you've been somewhere yes. where maybe some common bermuda or something yes. and a little patch here and a little but patch to see there. it cut at an eighth of an inch yeah is just that's cool that, that is cool mm -hmm. you know um i've had a lot of fun with that i bet yeah. i bet and it's amazing just to feel oh yeah you know that's what i said you can read about it you can look at pictures you can, mm -hmm. you can talk about it this and that but when you put your hands on it you feel oh, yeah. it you, you know you feel this and, and i think you said it was cut at three quarters this is three quarters now yeah, yeah. and then you feel that one eighth and yeah. that's tight i mean yeah. it's it's but it's it's could, could you imagine it having that as a dog no i could not no. <laughs> <laughs> no. i mean the maintenance of it yeah it is the big it's a lot of mowing yeah. it, so it, you know i mow that every day back to bermuda basics uh fertilizer requirements totally and completely opposite of cool season cool season you know spring and fall yeah when it's cooler that's when you give it heavy doses of nitrogen mm -hmm. heavier doses of nitrogen Bermuda totally opposite 100, 180 degree difference in the summer when it's in its environment in the heat and growing good that's when you feed Bermuda mm -hmm. you don't go out and feed Bermuda in October with heavy nitrogen or November or December it's dormant it can't do anything with it you know what I'm saying yep. so we like to feed the turf the heaviest I like to feed the turf the heaviest amounts of nitrogen when it's in its prime growing its best mm -hmm. so summertime Bermuda uh, fungicides yeah the, uh, Bermuda on a rare occasion can deal with disease but it's super rare at least in the setting of a home lawn mm -hmm. you know when you get into uh, these high-end putting greens and high-end golf courses and stuff they may deal with a little bit more disease pressure because of the way they're managing it mm -hmm. maybe but in a home lawn where you're just kind of doing the basics throughout the year uh, i mean the weather really has to get wonky uh, for, for you to have to deal with disease uh, this Bermuda we're standing on, I have yet to spray a fungicide on. So it's just it's just very tolerant or very um, resistant. resistant or not susceptible to disease. Yeah. So that's that's actually a you know a pro to it. Herbicides, 
Oh boy, this is one of my <laughs> favorite things about Bermuda. So you got all this cool season turf, bluegrass, rye, and fescue. What if you get an unwanted grass like Bermuda in those cool season turfs or poetrilla, poannual, yeah. goosegrass, Johnson grass? It's all kind of grasses that can get in a cool season turf and there ain't no herbicide. Yeah. They don't make them. They just, they, they, they're not available other than Roundup. Yeah. Of course, there's a few uh, select ones, Acclaim and Pilex and things like that where you can go after Bermuda. But when I say an effective herbicide, I mean like a three-way when you spray it on clover, yeah. poof, gone. it's gone. It's not coming back. That's what yeah. I mean by an effective herbicide. They don't make them for cool season. Yeah. Where Bermuda, you have multiple options. Revolver, Katana, Tribute Total, uh, there, there's, there's several of them out there that if I get fescue in my mm -hmm. Bermuda, if I get Poa Annual, Poa Triv, if I get Johnson grass, if I get goose grass is a little tricky one, goose grass is just a tough one anyway, but all these other grasses that I don't want in my Bermuda, they make herbicides for me. Mm -hmm. That is what is so incredibly cool. My favorite one has got to be Tribute Total or Katana. Mm -hmm. Those are two herbicides to where you can take out pretty much all the grasses, all the broadleaf, the nut sedge, the kalinga, the whole nine yards with one herbicide. That's good. That's would good. that not be nice if we had a, <laughs> that would if be, we had that a would fescue awesome. <laughs> herbicide that would just clean up everything? Yes. yes. Holy cow, that'd be game changing. And you know, stuff. like you said, I mean, in, in my fescue lawn, if I get a little bit of poa or, or something, you're digging it out. Yep. Putting down a little bit of seed, or you are spraying around it. Yep. Yes. Herbicides is a huge pro, mm -hmm. uh, a, a huge asset when it comes to a Bermuda grass yard. So, uh, pros and cons. Um, obviously, uh, my favorite con, uh, pro, my favorite pro to having a Bermuda yard for the homeowner. Granted, if you live in the right location, you have Bermuda. You yeah. want to make sure, because like I said, go back and watch your first part of the video. Bermuda's not going to grow to its best every single place yeah. in the country. Is the majority of people that I know personally do their family time, their hangout time, their let's have fun time in the yard in the summer. Mm -hmm. Cookouts, mm -hmm. all that kind of thing. And the yard nut or the, 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 the guy's crazy bass turf would want the yard nice and green. Yeah. I don't know when you when you was coming in if you rode around, did you see all the fescue that's checked out? Yes. It is yes. brown <laughs> as it can yeah, be right. Gone. We are incredibly dry, very hot. Very hot. And fescue's gotta have your water. Bermuda needs water, uh, not as much as fescue. So it can it can handle the heat a lot better. And that's just a big pro for me. Yeah. You know, if if I were a Bermuda guy, if Bermuda was top on my list, that would be the number one thing that I would like about it. It's because I can go out in the middle of the summer, July, August, 100 degrees, as long as it gets a little bit of water and it, I'm feeding it correctly, yeah. it's going to look really good. Where ours is stressed at this point. Yes. You know, we're seeing stress yes. signs due to the heat due to lack of water absolutely you, you, you come down here and you get on this and it's 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 like it's, it's like walking around on carpet yeah ain't it? this is what we have in like um i guess you would say our springtime and fall time it's thriving exactly. you know you mow it it's it's happy everything's exactly. good so. now one one of the main differences in that cool season warm season thing is you can grow cool season turf in the heat mm -hmm. You can, as long as you got the water to provide it, it can happen. Uh, the the way that it differs with Bermuda, you cannot grow green Bermuda in December. <laughs> yeah. Not if you've had a frost, yeah. okay? That's the difference. I can't, it's the genetic of the turf. Mm -hmm. and that's actually a con of it. And we got pros and cons, a con of it is, it's going to turn brown. 
period. Yep. There's absolutely nothing you can do unless you want to come out and drag tarps over your yard before every frost, which nobody's going to do. No. Unless you live in the southernmost part of Florida, the southernmost part of Texas where you don't get frost at all, it'll stay green. Yeah. But the, other than that, there's nothing you can do. It's going to turn brown, period. So that's a big time turn off to a lot of people. And that happens right at the first frost, basically? Right at the first frost, okay. which for us is around the first of November-ish. Okay. And you'll be able to walk out here and of course the, the whole yard will be white mm -hmm. with frost. Mm -hmm. And in the next two or three days, you'll begin to watch the color gradually go away. And then the second frost will hit and then two or three days after that, it's almost brown. It, it's all, now, now some of the different varieties of Bermuda will go into the winter longer than others okay. because of the genetic makeup and the way they've been bred to do that. I don't, I don't get into that so much. Mm -hmm. I don't keep up with what varieties will actually go longer because at the end of the day, they're all going to shut down. Yeah. You know they're what I mean? They're, they're, they're all going to shut down. Yeah. To look at it, to feel it. If you're not accustomed to Bermuda mm -hmm. grass, it's got a different feel. It's mm -hmm. thick. It's it's and, and it's hot. I, of course, mm -hmm. I'm I'm a cool season guy. I guess yeah, it's you know? hot. Look yeah. at your forehead. Yeah, and <laughs> you know uh, to to see grass so thin as far as the cut thriving in this heat is yeah. amazing. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. it is. Cool. The way I water this out here, you know, I got an irrigation system. Uh, I water it twice a week at 20 minutes of zone. Uh, twice a week, 20 minutes of zone, and then I'll syringe it in the afternoons for like three minutes of zone. And that's, that's every day that it's above 90 degrees. Uh -huh. if, I, if I had to put like a number to it, if it's above 90, it gets a syringe in. If, if I have to do it 50 days in a row, that's what I do. But my main watering is two times a week, 20 minutes a day. It's not a lot. Yeah. You know? We've been rather dry this year. And uh, outside the spring, when I seeded a few spots, I don't think I've watered maybe one time. And yes, you. Yeah. And the rains have come just, you know, in the right time. I yeah. guess we've yeah. been blessed with that part of it. But, you know, it. But it's four inches, it's cooler. You know, to us, an 85 degree day is for, you know, and yeah. it's probably I was going to ask that, what, what, in comparison to your weather today, how is it different from my weather? It's probably 10 degrees warmer right now than it is back at home at this time. And what about humidity? Oh, off the chart here. Co co yeah. Considerably more. And right. we can get humid during the day, but it seemed like the cooler mountain air is yeah. when we cool down and and our humidity drops and mm -hmm. you know you, you can raise the windows and sleep all night you know and, oh and my gosh you, you know. raise the window here you're gonna get taken off by a mosquito <laughs> now now sometimes you know it, it is a little muggy for yeah. that but i mean we don't have near the heat and the humidity that you and you're three hours Maybe about three, and three and hours and 15 minutes yeah, yeah. about um, three hours difference of course, Jeff's in a more of a mountainous climate too, so that's yeah. gonna make a Still big on difference. the transition zone, yeah. but uh, it, it's more north and uh, in the mountainous area. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's 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 different. Yeah, a lot different. That's right. You know, three hours you wouldn't think so, but it's it's significant yeah. as far. It's, it's amazing how, how you can just drive three four hours down the yes. street and the climate is night and day different. Yes, and that's when we talked. Yeah. You know, I, I wouldn't find this. In, in West Virginia, yeah, and or or at least thriving like it is, being mm. cut like it is, unless you hit maybe a, a golf course. I, I'm not real sure, but yeah, it's um, it's interesting to drive three hours and see it just growing in the front lawn. Yeah, you know, it's, it's that's cool. right, that's right. Hey, <clears throat> so we'll finish it off with this, and we'll start mowing. The most important thing about Bermuda, I think there's a twofold answer to this question. Again, in my opinion. Number one, once you go to Bermuda, yeah. you don't go back. You're done. You don't go back. Okay. Uh, yes, I'm sure somewhere over the rainbow in the perfect world, there's ways to kill Bermuda, kill it permanently. I've been doing this for 20 years. And if it is, I haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> so 
the point I'm making is we, we've done hundreds of renovations, taking Bermuda out, switching them over to fescue. It is incredibly rare for us to have a long-term renovation in the Bermuda not creep back in at some point in time. Yeah. And, I, and I get a lot of the emails like that. Yep. You know, uh, I killed it all off last year, got fescue, got uh, bluegrass, whatever be the case. And, and I'm starting to get it. I'm seeing Bermuda come back in. Yeah. And I, I think I read this somewhere at one point in time. I cannot remember where I read it, but uh, uh, someone done some excavating and found Bermuda roots eight feet deep. Wow. Eight, eight feet. Eight feet deep in the ground. Now, whether or not that was true or not, I don't know. I'm not claiming that Bermuda <laughs> roots go that deep. I read it, so I don't know. Imagine that little four ounces of herbicide, can it actually travel eight feet in the ground? <laughs> that, you know, when you yeah. kind of try and think about that real hard, it just don't seem hard logical. Hard to imagine. Though. Yeah. It's hard and to imagine. So, that's the number one thing you need to realize it. Once you go Bermuda, chances are you're going to be dealing with Bermuda down the street or down the road years to come. And I think your webpage has that, doesn't it? Make sure you... Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm very clear. Make <laughs> yeah. sure this is what you want. Yes. You know? Yes. Uh, second thing is, it's going to turn brown in the winter. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. uh, Bermuda's going to look awesome in the summer, but it's going to shut down when the frost hits it and go brown. And those are the two things that I think people really need to consider if you want to make a switch to Bermuda grass. Mm -hmm. Because those are two things that Pete, Jeff, Johnny, Bill, Bob, we can't, none of us change yet. Yeah, it's exactly. going to happen at some point in time. So you have to be able to accept that. And if you can, it's great turf. Yeah, it's, it's fascinating to walk on the field to touch. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. So we're going to get to mowing, and I appreciate you coming. Well, I appreciate you I having me here. Week. I'm looking forward to us doing good things Absolutely. in the future, man. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. So, Love it. As always, I appreciate you taking time out of your day to watch. I'll check you later.